By this point, Korean nationalists were thinking, the world doesn't hear us. Our former emperor is dead. What are we going to do? That's it. We are going to go out to the streets, proclaim our independence, and organize a peaceful demonstration. Brilliant idea? Raise your hand if you think it's a brilliant idea. Okay, only like five hands. Terrible idea. Raise your hand if you think it's a terrible idea. When one Canadian doctor at the Severance Hospital was told about the nationwide protest against Japan, he thought this was a really terrible idea. And that doctor was Dr. Frank Schofield, who already had been an outspoken critic of Japanese colonial policies in Korea. So on February 28, 1919, 100 years yesterday, one of his students informed him of the events planned for the following day. The student then handed Schofield a copy of the Declaration of Independence, signed by 33 nationalist leaders, and asked Schofield to distribute this among the colleagues at the hospital. And even more, to deliver this to the White House. Schofield thought this was a really bad idea. Surely a peaceful protest will not put an end to Japan's colonial rule. And surely the US, which at the time was Japan's ally, could not care less. In his own words, Schofield said he tried his best to persuade the student the folly of the whole plan. No one would listen. Nothing will change. It'll even make things worse. But the student's reply really surprised him. This was the student's reply. You are an Englishman, so you think like an imperialist. But we trust you. We trust you. These words changed everything for Schofield. So despite his fears, Schofield agreed to help because of that trust. He was given the task of documenting the events with his camera. The next day, March 1st, 1910, 1919, 100 years ago today, over 3,000 copies of the Declaration were distributed. By 2 p.m., over 5,000 people had gathered at the Pagoda Park in central Seoul to hear the proclamation of the Declaration. Excerpts. We hereby declare that Korea is an independent state and that Koreans are a self-governing people. We proclaim it to the nations of the world in affirmation of the principle of the equality of all nations. And we proclaim it to our posterity, preserve it in perpetuity, the right of national survival. We make this declaration on the strength of 5,000 years of history as an expression of the devotion and loyalty of 20 million people. For the first time in several thousand years, we have suffered the agony of alien suppression for a decade becoming a victim of the policies of aggression and coercion. We do not intend to accuse Japan of infidelity for its violation of various solemn treaty obligations since the Treaty of Amity of 1876. Japan's scholars and officials indulging in a conqueror's exuberance have denigrated the accomplishments of our ancestors and treated our civilized people like barbarians. Despite their disregard for the ancient origins of our society and the brilliant spirit of our people, we shall not blame Japan. We must first blame ourselves before finding faults in others. We have a reason now. Conscience is on our side and truth guides our way. The spirits of thousands of generations of our ancestors protect us. The rising tide of world consciousness 
shall assist us. Once started, we shall surely succeed. With this hope, we march forward. Schofield took pictures of the scenes at the Pagoda Park. After the declaration was uh, announced, people waved a Korean flag, right? Shouted, long live, hooray, Korean independence. <laughs> Scoville also took pictures of Japanese soldiers stationed outside the park. And in, in fact, uh, throughout Seoul. Taken by surprise, the Japanese police and troops reacted with violence. By the end of the day, 134 people were arrested, including 29 leaders who signed the declaration. But it sparked the beginning of nationwide demonstrations. Millions of Koreans who paraded the streets all over Korea, they shouted, long live Korean independence, in the streets of Seoul, also in the streets of Pyongyang. This was the most massive demonstration of nationalism in the modern history of Korea. And before the Japanese finally suppressed the movement, 12 months later, approximately 2 million Koreans had participated in the more than 1,500 demonstrations. A lot of houses were destroyed, churches, school buildings, all destroyed by fire. And approximately 46,000 people were arrested, of whom um, some 10,000 were uh, tried and convicted. About 7,000 people were killed. Many, many were wounded. See, many injured Koreans came to the hospital, the Severance Hospital. So Canadian doctors like Schofield were able to witness the results of torture and imprisonment. And they took pictures, too. Schofield opened his home to Koreans punished by flogging and visited many of them in prison or in their homes to provide treatment. And Schofield continued to photograph the atrocities committed by the Japanese police and soldiers. Sorry, this is before lunch, but... <laughs> in the village of Cheongli and Sucheonli, Japanese police pushed everyone into uh, a church building, locked it, and then burned it to the ground. Right. They shot to death everyone who was trying to escape. Schofield heard the news, he went, and he took pictures of um, what remained. So how did Canada respond to all this? The initial reaction? This was a troubled look for. They look for this trouble. Thousands arrested for demonstration on March 1st. Trouble looked for. But Canadian missionaries in Korea, other missionaries, two Christian missionaries in Korea, felt the urge to expose the brutality of the Japanese administration to the Western world. They couldn't stay quiet. Although the Canadian, the British, and the American governments were not interested in getting involved, citing political neutrality. The missionaries in Korea proclaimed that there can be no neutrality to brutality. This was their slogan. Soon, missionaries began writing about the incident. So Ottawa should be proud. Herbert T. Owen, who was an administrator from Ottawa, was one of the first ones to write the report. He was a lay member of the United Church of Canada and decided to bring his whole family to Korea, his wife and two children. This is the original letter by Owen, dated March 24, when the protests were still raging in the streets of Seoul. He writes, according to one newspaper, 6,000 Koreans are now in jails and prisons, and this is probably below the actual number. In the name of law and order, countless offenses against humanity are daily being committed. The sword is the emblem of Japanese 
authority. April 1919, by a Canadian Presbyterian minister named Armstrong, writing to the Globe that, you, uh, that the atrocities in Korea are in fact real and serious. More articles, May 3rd, May 12th, Korea wants home rule, the plea of Korea for national liberty. And the document on the right, this is an actual translation of the Declaration of Independence. Of course, Governor General at the time, Hasegawa Yoshimichi, denied all these reports. Even the American ambassador in Tokyo denied the allegations, who said he cannot understand why Koreans are unhappy about Japanese rule. Um, they told the Western reporters, don't just listen to the missionaries. They blamed the missionaries, especially Schofield, accused him of being the agitator. And they began criticizing Canadian mission. The Toronto Daily Star, before it became Toronto Star, article from December 14, 1920, reports on the Japanese complaints about Canadian mission. And how Koreans used hospital cellar, so hospital, the Severance Hospital, um, for their anti-Japanese activities, which the hospital authority uh, denied. At the end, the support from the White House that Koreans hoped for did not come. The Wilsonian administration was unwilling to antagonize Japan thinking that it is too dangerous for the U.S. In fact, two months before the March 1st movement, in January, members of the Japanese Diet visited the White House. <coughs> but Schofield continued to advocate for the people in Korea. He wrote a series of articles, publishing them in the Globe. Korea groans beneath yoke of oppression. Japanese reforms in Korea. He writes, following the March 1st movement, the so-called reforms proposed by Japan. These are, in fact, not real reforms. This is a new form of repression. In this document, which is a really, really remarkable document, Schofield criticizes colonialism, even the British rule of India and Ireland. He writes, any forced assimilation can never succeed because it is contrary to the laws of nature. And that independence for everyone was an inherent and moral right. In this report, he even interviewed the Prime Minister of Japan, Hara Takashi and asked him about the atrocities committed by the Japanese troops in Korea, which the Prime Minister denied. Um, and Schofield writes that any reform that did not begin with a sincere investigation into the atrocities committed against the Korean people would ultimately fail to inspire trust in the Korean people. Eventually, because of all the troubles that he caused, Schofield was deported to Canada after Japan pressured Presbyterian Mission in Canada to call him back. <coughs> the impact of the March 1st movement was profound and long-lasting. Of course, many lives were lost, but it gained worldwide publicity and criticism of the colonial government um, in Korea. On April 11th, 1919, Provisional Government of Korea or Republic of Korea was established in Shanghai. And many Korean nationalists residing in Manchuria also formed their national uh, congress. The incident also inspired many overseas Koreans to fight for Korean independence overseas. The March, the March 1st movement led to a major shift in Japan's policy towards Korea allowing certain measures of appeasement, although temporarily. But the fight for independence did not stop, and it continued to grow. An Chang-ho, 
was a renowned educator and nationalist. And in this document, the Grand Strategy for Independence, written in 1920, he writes, our independence depends on the entire people. He asked the people, let me ask you, how many times a day do you think about our country? Every day, every hour, every minute, we must think and be ready for this. We need to have military strength to destroy Japan and regain our independence by forming Korean Independence Army. But we also need to continue peaceful warfare, he writes, through aggressive lobbying, refusing to pay tax, by boycotting Japanese currency and goods, by growing our own economic power, by purchasing Korean goods, by organizing mass strikes and student protests, and by excelling in what we do, like marathoner Song Gizong, who won the gold medal at the Berlin Olympic. Marathon, gold, the first non-Westerner to win this um, uh, medal, creating a new world record. And by taking risks and making personal sacrifices, like Shin Nakyun, who was the head of the photography department at uh, East Asia Daily Newspaper, who together with editors decided to smudge <coughs> the Japanese flag on Son's chest in the photo of his award ceremony. So that is the draft, and that's the final copy. Of course, the Japanese didn't like this. Shin was arrested, and after 40 days of harsh torture, he was released on the condition never to participate in media-related work. He knew this was going to happen, but he was willing to take the sacrifice. If you're an artist, rather than producing art endorsed by the Japanese administration for the colonial art exhibit, art that sensualized Koreans as submissive feminines and representing the benefits of Japanese colonial rule, Producing art that you believed in, even if that meant you would be a starving artist, like Ikwede, who in his self-portrait on the right, represented himself as a defiant artist, staring straight at the viewer, holding his brush like a weapon to fight <coughs> colonial representations of Korea. Showing Koreans as a strong people, rising up, caring, and supporting each other. When Japan entered World War II, the colonial administration introduced harsher policies to fully assimilate Koreans to support Japan's war effort. They forced Koreans to change their names into Japanese names. And without Japanese names, children couldn't go to school or mails couldn't be delivered. They conscripted Korean men to fight for Japan overseas and also forced thousands of young Korean women into military sex slavery to serve the Japanese troops. Through all this, Koreans did not stop dreaming about independence. As we see in this poem by Shin Hun. While he was a high school student, Shin participated in the March 1st movement. He was arrested, imprisoned for four months. And in his poem, she mentions the great 15th century bell, Jongno Bell, located in the Pagoda Park, where the March 1st demonstrations started. He imagines it clanging loudly on the day that Korea regains its independence. When that day comes, when that day comes, Mount Sangha will rise and dance. The waters of Han will rise up. If that day comes before I perish, I'll soar like a crow at night and pound the Zhong Nobel with my head. The bones of my skull will scatter, but I shall die in joy without regret. When that day comes, when that day has come at last, oh that day, 
I will roll and leap and shout on the boulevard. And if joy still stifles within my breast, I'll take a knife and skin my body and make a large drum and march with it in the vanguard. Oh, procession. Let me once hear that thundering shout, even if I fall headlong, my eyes can close then. Shim died in 1937, eight years before Korea's Liberation Day. But that day eventually came on August 15, 1945, with Japan's defeat in World War II. And this was what the streets of Seoul looked like on that day. See, on that day, many in Canada rejoiced with Koreans. All the missionaries whose stories we heard today, who advocated for Korean independence, were thrilled to see that day come. Among them was Dr. Schofield, who returned to Korea after the Korean War and once again taught Korean students at the university. He was honored as the 30 fourth leader of independence and was awarded the Republic of Korea National Medal of Foundation in 1968. He died in Korea in 1970 and his funeral was aired on TV and he became the first foreigner to be buried in the National Cemetery. And the village of Jeonli remembers Schofield and what he did. There's a statue of young Schofield photographing the evidence of Japanese atrocities. When all the Canadian missionaries returned to Canada, many of them and their families brought back from Korea um, well, the, the, their belongings. And then they later donated them to the Royal Ontario Museum. Our collection includes paintings donated by the family of James Gale, who helped advance Korean language education. So that's another painting donated by Gale. He loved paintings. There's also a lacquered mirror box donated by the daughter of Ottawa administrator Herbert Owen who wrote the report on the March 1st movement. The report we read. Our collection also includes this Korean flag, which you saw in the opening slide. It was donated by Dr. Norman Bound, who worked at the Severance Hospital between 1921 and 1935. Dr. Found, um, when he was not working at the hospital, he also led a medical tour around Korea to bring Medicare to Koreans who couldn't come to Seoul, right? Because you know, ordinary people cannot possibly come to Seoul to receive Medicare. He, in particular, focused on infant welfare, so set up milk stations. So that's one of the a pic, a picture of the milk station that he set up. The milk stations are across the country, um, which greatly reduced infant uh, mortality. When Dr. Norman found was leaving Korea in 1935, his Korean friends got together and gave him a farewell party. At the end of the party, they presented him with a very special gift, this flag, as a farewell gift to the Canadian doctor. This flag was used during the March 1st demonstration in 1919, they told him. We know it was illegal to possess or display this flag in public. But whoever hid this flag for years thought that this was the best farewell gift they could give to Dr. Found, who was returning to Canada. Why? Why? I believe it was because they trusted him. Just as the organizers organizers of the March 1st demonstration. Just as they trusted Dr. Schofield, 
they trusted that Dr. Found shared that spirit of independence and believed and hoped that he would continue to be an advocate for Korean independence back in his homeland, Canada. As a proud Korean Canadian on this very special day to commemorate the 100th anniversary of March 1st independence movement, I am moved and humbled by the friendship of trust that Koreans and Canadians built and cherished 100 years ago. Today indeed is a very special day. Both Koreans and Canadians waved this flag together. They were together in the spirit of independence. Thank you very much. <laughs>